Uh, so obviously on the screen here, I've already kind of pre-written everything. Um, so we're going to talk about neurons, and we're going to talk first really briefly um, and really fast about what neurons are, what they look like, and what they do, and how each part does something. Um, so this first part right here is the beginning, or what many would consider the beginning of the neuron. Uh, these dendrites are on the, top, the tips of these extensions of the neuron cell body. <clears throat> and the dendrites receive information from other neurons, from the sensory receptors, um, the environment. So when you touch your skin, you're actually engaging um, impulses that go through the dendrites into the neuron cell body, which um, you know reacts to whatever it's um, being stimulated by. This cannot induct impulses. So um, never, ever, ever think that this is the um, what conducts impulses. Only, um, here, I'll put it on here, only the axon. Oops. Creates impulses. Only the axon creates impulses. I cannot stress that enough. So, of course, we'll talk about the axon. The axon is the most, one of the most important things within the nervous system. Um, the axon is obviously where the impulses are created. Uh, they can initiate um, or conduct impulses. Um, I just said that, but um, that's kind of the vernacular that you'll have to get used to when we're talking about this. Uh, and these can either be short or very long. Some axons can extend about a meter. So, I mean, we're talking like three feet. We're talking three and a half feet. So from the tips of your toes all the way to your spinal cord, you can have axons that actually extend all the way up your leg. Um, and we usually call those nerve fibers. Um, you know, very long axon fibers, <coughs> excuse me, are called nerve fibers uh, more often than not. So when they say, oh, well, you've um, injured or impaired a nerve fiber, you're pinching a nerve. They're typically talking about the axon itself, so you're pinching the axon. Um, and the, over here, these are your axon terminals. Terminals, uh, M, I, sorry about that. So those have synaptic vesicles with neurotransmitter in them. And within the neuron cell body is where you will find the nissel bodies that are um, responsible for creating neurotransmitters. So they're basically just sheets of rough endoplasmic reticulum where the neurotransmitter is created and produced. And that's within the neuron cell body. And they, of course, travel down into the axon terminals where they kind of harbor until they are released um, via synaptic vesicles. So... Um, as we kind of go through this, I wanted to stress that, and I'm using Microsoft Paint, so I do apologize for kind of the, um, of course, production quality is not as great as it could be, but um, I'm working on that. <laughs> so axonal transport, um, it uses, uh, we'll just write that up there, transport. Um, axonal transport will use what we call microtubules. And um, most of you have probably heard of microtubules, and if you haven't, that's okay. Uh, microtubules are um, these very small tubes that uh, many of your cells will use for many different things. Um, the best example that I can tell you about microtubules is the one we're going to talk about right now. Microtubules are responsible for um, what we consider. Um, motor protein movement. So this is a motor protein and motor proteins are proteins that move. They actually move and they move via um, many different processes and this is ATP that's on top of it. Oh, I put ATR. That's ATP. So this is ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that the motor protein is actually carrying on top of it. And it also uses ATP to actually move each one of its legs. So this is one leg and this is the other leg. And it actually moves like as, as if you're walking. So if you take your two fingers, your index and then your uh, middle finger, um, you can actually kind of, you know, if you just put one out front first and then the other one out front again, and you kind of just try walking with them, 
And if you kind of do it systematically, that's actually the way that a motor protein will um, cross down a microtubule. <coughs> Excuse me again. Axonal transport requires that these motor proteins carry adenosine triphosphate to walk along these um, long microtubules. And each way down a, um, so if we were to discuss, um, here's, um, we're going to do a quick and easy. Um, quick and easy way. Here we go. Right. So here, um, the axon or axonal transport. Um, this is the whole neuron. So if we were going from the neuron cell body, we gotta get the nucleus in there. Um, going from the neuron cell body to the axon terminals, we call that anti-grade. transport. This is um, going down the um, axon from the neuron cell body to the um, axon terminals <coughs> and this would be motor proteins going from the microtubules um, on down. So this would also be going this way. But you can also go the reverse way. So if we were to go to the reverse way, oops, let's make that a little bit better. Oh my gosh. That's about as good as we'll get, I guess. So the reverse is um, basically what you would call a retrograde. Oops. Retrograde transport. So retrograde transport is where you go from the axon terminal to the neuron cell body. So you're going from here to here. So this would be if um, you needed to carry a broken neurotransmitter, worn down mitochondria, or cellular signals that are coming from the axon terminal to uh, the neuron cell body. So um, here we would just carry neurotransmitters um, so NT is neurotransmitter. Um, enzymes, and mitochondria, proteins, etc. Um, here, the best example and what is often, um, what retrograde um, transport is often used for is broken neurotransmitters, uh, worn down mitochondria. worn down mitochondria. Retrograde transport is often hijacked by uh, bacteria, uh, viruses, etc. Any kind of microbe that will utilize, even parasites, they'll utilize retrograde uh, transport and have motor proteins carry them from the axon terminals where they invade all the way up to um, the neuron cell body where 